So for today, we are going to uh, deal with otosclerosis. And uh, sclerosis means basically thickening in anatomy. Uh, by whatever means, by whatever uh, ways, uh, there may be different etiologies for sclerosis in different case, cases. But the sclerosis is, uh, if there is a sclerosis, there will be some thickening anatomically. So I'm showing you the figure of uh, the external, middle and the internal here together. Just to remind you how the sound gets conducted. It comes uh, from the external auditory canal and through the eardrum, it passes through the malice incus stapes and through the oval window, it enters the inner ear and there within the cochlea, it is circulated by the perilymph that mobilizes the endolymph part and the hair cells and the hair cells finally conduct the, uh, makes the change in the amplitude and there is a, a wave generated which is taken up by the eighth nerve to the further upper system of the brain for interpretation. So this is all we all know about the hearing uh, mechanism physiology. So bearing this in mind, we'll go ahead and discuss the otosclerosis part. So what is otosclerosis? It is a primary metabolic bone disease and that affects the otic capsule and the ossicles. This usually affects the stapes foot plate and results in fixation of the ossicles, especially the stapes foot plate and thus cause conductive hearing loss. Since we have seen the last figure that shows the conduction mechanism, so we all know uh, more important in this case is a conductive hearing loss commonly. But in some cases, you will find some sensory neural hearing loss and mixed hearing loss also. But mixed hearing loss will be the least one. Sometimes there will be sensory neural if the cochlea is involved and that is in that case it is called as cochlear otosclerosis. So apart from the otosclerosis which we diagnose, some of the otosclerosis is never diagnosed throughout the life and can be seen in the temporal bones if they are preserved after death of a particular individual and in such cases that is called as histologic otosclerosis. <coughs> that has been found only in the cases which have been uh, studied after death and then the histological finding has shown that there was a histologic otosclerosis. We don't do it here, but uh, sometimes in future some of you will do this and we'll discover how much histological otosclerosis is there in India. Clinical sclerosis is... Uh, in a ratio which is more common to female in the rest of the part of the world. But in India, most commonly males come to the OPD. The ratio 2 is to 1 gets reverses to 1 is to 2 in India. But I believe that if a possible study is done with a proper, proper prevalence rate, uh, India will also have the same incidence of occurrence as the world because here females usually do not uh, visit OPDs for hearing losses, they come usually very late or they try to hide this figure because of the social circumstances we all know. So there is high prevalence of this disease in the age group of 10 to 45. And uh, there is progression of this, this disease common in, uh, in a condition which is more stressful after a very stressful period like operation, operative procedure or pregnancy. Uh, there is a possible progression of the disease and patients usually pre uh, present uh, at those period of time. It is an autosomal dominant disease. If present, it will be expressed. It means hereditary in 70%. Then again, 1% uh, of the Caucasians with symptoms present with these disease. Some call it uh, autoimmune disease. Some try, some researchers have found that some viral genome has been found and that causes the progression of autosclerotic foci in the middle ear. 
and thus uh, the autosclerosis develops. But everyone has a different say in this. Wanderhoof syndrome is the one in which we have a osteogenesis imperfecta, autosclerosis, and the third one, blue sclera. It is a syndrome which is usually seen. So possible etiology has been discussed here in connection with the measles virus, but only few believe in this and most of them believe in the uh, genetic theory. Whatever comes, we'll later on know how it happens. All these lead to sclerosis of the stapes foot plate. So <clears throat> there are two phases, the active and the mature phase. In active phase, there is active resorption of bone and the dilatation of the vessels around the active site which can be sometimes seen even through the tympanic membrane on a clinical examination. And then that reddish hue is visible and that is visible only in up to 10% of the cases. And in rest of them, the membrane may be thick or it may not be visible. In a mature phase, there is a new bone formation and uh, that can even be appreciated on CT scan also. So most common sites involved this is one of your questions which usually come in exams for the post graduation, which is the most common site that is the fissula and fenestrum that is 90% cases, followed by the round window, the cochlear labyrinth, the stapes foot plate, and posterior side of the oval window. These are the common sites in this, this order, which is seen in of otosclerosis. I will again repeat it the fissula and fenestrum, round window cochlear labyrinth, the stapes foot plate, and the posterior or the oval window. Another classification says that if there is involvement of cochlea, it can be called as cochlear otosclerosis, ossicular sclerosis if it involves the stapes foot plate only, and sometimes both may be involved. So that is why in cochlear one, we have a sensory neural hearing loss also. We'll see it further. So these are different a classification at, as per site of the otosclerosis. In the, in the histological figure, you can see otosclerotic bone being formed in the fissula and fenestrum site. This one showing the anterior foot, foot plate involvement. This is the anterior stapes foot plate involvement, that is anterior otosclerosis. Then the annular one involving the annular ligament. Sometimes both sites are involved sometimes the round window which we have already discussed and biscuit type foot plate biscuit foot plate is the one in which whole of the stapes is getting involved in the process of otosclerosis commonly it will be a conductive hearing loss uh, but sometimes there will be sensory neural hearing loss also so the cochlear otosclerosis has a pure sensory neural hearing impairment without any conductive component and this incidence is quite low, okay? This can usually be seen only in the cases of histologic one, which we usually see after the death of the patient. If the temporal bone is studied, we find the histologic cases, okay? So in this, you can see the cochlear variant, the hellenization of the spiral ligament or erosion of the inner ear. These histologic findings you can note in a cochlear variant of the otosclerosis. Fine. How to diagnose a case of otosclerosis? A male or female presenting to you in age group of 10 to 40 with a progressive hearing loss that is conductive on your port pivot on audiometry, usually bilateral, sometimes associated with tinnitus is what is the clinical feature of a otosclerotic patient. In this, if you do a pivoton audiometry, you will find a Carhartt notch in up to 40 to 50% of patients that is dip in the bone conduction during a pivoton audiometry around 2000 Hertz commonly but it can happen at any of the frequencies from 1000 to 4000. 
and that dip will not be sudden it will be a gradual one there is one phenomena seen in this disease that is paraquesis vilsi in which a patient of otosclerosis hears well in a noisy surroundings because the person who is speaking in a noisy surrounding uh, speaks really louder than the <coughs> normal environment sometimes there will be a family history or history of ear infections so on pneumatic otoscopy we can see a membrane sometimes not mobile properly on uh, increasing the pressure of the otoscope but on auto microscopy we can rule out some of the middle ear effusions tympanosclerosis tympanic me membrane perforations or cholestatoma as a differential diagnosis so the red issue which was uh, which i was discussing in a active case of otosclerosis in the initial phase of otosclerosis uh, which is uh, visible through the membrane on otoscopy in up to 10% of cases is called as swards sign it is one of the signs which is commonly asked in your examinations so of tuning fork test or weber test renis test absolute bone conduction test these are all tuning fork test which need to be done and in that you will find commonly a conductive hearing loss then you classify the differential diagnosis it can be a ossicular discontinuity type congenital stepes fixation malleus head fixation it can be as a part of the paget's disease osteogenesis imperfecta or a adhesive otitis media which can present with these phases these uh, presentations then you have to differentiate these you have to go for a impedance audiometry in that impedance audiometry there will be different findings we have already discussed this findings of tympanometry how we do the tympanometry what are the findings and in what finding you will have which kind of disease so type 1 a sorry type a is a normal one and as is a stepes fixation a d is a discontinuity type a and then you it comes to b uh, b is a fluid in the middle ear and c is a adhesive otitis media so these are different presentations of a tympanometry represented represented on a tympanogram we have already discussed this how a tympanometry is done and what are the importance of these tests so then you can go for a acoustic reflex in a process of tympanometry that can uh, be seen on the the same side ipsilateral one and the contralateral one if there is involvement of stepes foot plate the signal will not be properly transmitted the contralateral one may be elevated even the ipsilateral one will be elevated or bilateral one can be elevated as per the site of the involvement of the stepes foot plate in pure tone audiometry we have all uh, already discussed we can see a very hallmark finding that the carhart notch usually around the 2000 hertz this is a carhart notch which we can see on a audiogram this one the dip in the bone conduction around the 2000 hertz such kind of dip is also seen around 4000 hertz in cases of a in cases of a noise induced hearing losses we have discussed these kind of losses before in initial classes sometimes uh, on ct scan you can find a active site and that can be seen like a red chalky spot or a dark flash like spot on a ct scan see this is a active site in a cochlear otosclerosis this slide which i am showing and focusing you can see a hyperlucency over here then going for the management option after investigation we have to go for other treatments for the treatments that can be medical it can be just a amplification of the sound because the patient is not hearing properly or the patient can undergo surgery 
and sometimes the combination of all these may be required medically we give sodium fluoride which is not much commonly available only few companies make it in a dose of 20 to 120 milligrams uh, per day uh, the sodium fluoride is given that usually replaces the hydroxyl group in bone formation and thus it uh, stops the progression of hastens the progression of a disease and so that you can go for a surgery in time usually what i prefer is to give a so sodium fluoride for some few months 3 to 6 months and then go for the surgical part as needed so, then after sodium fluoride you can uh, give by uh, bisphosphonates also these are under all trials <coughs> the results of these bisphosphonates are equivocal amplification means using of a using of a hearing aid and hearing aid nowadays the conventional hearing aids the conventional ones also have an analog hearing aid or a digital hearing aid the digital ones are the advanced ones. Even the, the smallest frequency can be identified and well differentiated by the digital hearing aids. These hearing aids nowadays are so advanced that uh, they can be located, uh, they can be directly connected to the mobile, if in, even they can be connected to the doorbell for the elderly, they can be directly connected as a Bluetooth device to the uh, TV, television so that other family members uh, are not affected and they can see the television at a loud noise and that all is possible in this era another one is the bone anchored hearing aids so these can be uh, methods for amplification conventional hearing aids or the bone anchored hearing aids surgery is done if uh, there is one norm uh, at least one hearing ear is there then the other can undergo the surgery uh, the best suitable candidate for surgery is ear conduction between 45 to 60 decibels bone conduction 0 to 25 decibel ear bone gap in between 15 decibel and spree speech discrimination score should be greater than 60 percent so these uh, conditions if it is there uh, these candidates are best suitable for surgery definitely stapy surgery involves a uh, very high skill and you need a very high uh, magnification microscope for it you need to be well trained for it because facial nerve passes nearby you have to identify the smallest bone of the body sometimes it is so small that the tip of your uh, smallest instrument is also just uh, bigger for a step is foot plate okay so the surgery is done with usually a stepidectomy or a stepidotomy which is done we have to see if the patient is a diver or a driver or a pilot in these patients we usually avoid because in these patients after surgery if they do it the stepes may get, get divulged or the whatever processes we are going may move if it is moved in early phase there may be a leak of the perilymph and sometimes uh, this can be dangerous if a patient or uh, having otosclerosis along with meniere's disease we usually avoid doing surgery so these are the steps of uh, stepidectomy uh, lignocaine is given and uh, then a uh, incision post auricular or end auricular incision fo followed by identification of the stapes foot plate <coughs> you can see the facial nerve running along you can see the um, corda tympani nearby and then you have to identify the stapes foot plate after identifying the stapes foot plate you have to go for the stepidectomy or a stepidotomy as whatever has been planned you can make a small hole or you can remove the hole of the 
step is foot plate and then you need to put in a prosthesis these are different kind of prosthesis which you can see this can be a titanium one the steel one or the teflon one the teflon one um, are the easiest one to use and modify uh, if a titanium one is used you have to be very much be cautious for uh, mri now even mri compatible processes are available so these processes it is put in between the incus and the stapes foot plate and that uh, is finally if uh, it moves it causes movement of the inner ear fluids and you can see uh, note the voice whatever is coming okay these are different steps which we are showing you laser can also be used for fenestration purposes that drill can be used for that a simple perforator can be used for that for a stepidectomy these are different methods of doing it so you can see the steps so this is a uh, indication of a total stepidectomy extensive fixation or a floating foot plate is a indication and advantage is post op vestibular symptoms may be there and more technically difficult okay there are other complications also we usually prefer a stepidotomy that means making a hole fine these are few complications sometimes the facial nerve can be uh, damaged during the surgery that is very uncommon there can be a floating foot plate after the surgery sometimes perilymphatic gusher may be found perilymph may leak out after uh, at the time of surgery that has to be identified <clears throat> sometimes we can injure the uh, inner ear also during the surgery and that can lead to sensory neural hearing loss it is uh, very less very few cases of sensory neural hearing loss are seen after the surgery the bed rest is advised after surgery and the patient uh, has to remain in a lateral position with a head up for at least 24 hours and then he or she does not have to strain on this uh, any kind of strain for some time at least 2 uh, to 3 weeks few patients complain of vertigo because um, there may be some leak of the fluid or sometimes there may be some uh, other complications associated with it if we do some mistake during the surgery so if a surgeon has done a case very properly they you will have a very good result after stepidotomy and you can make a person hear who was not able to hear properly after some incidents in life so that is what is the importance of this particular chapter otosclerosis uh, stepidotomy the treatment part the anatomical classifications of it the <clears throat> types of his otosclerosis the treatment the medical part the surgical part the amplification part if someone asks you in examination you can go for all this paracusis will say sometimes comes as a separate question sometimes the tympanometric finding and uh, even the carhart notch can sometimes be a question in itself so 
now you can buy land in jnk if you want the pink part you can see that you can go for the kashmir part and the jammu part is still a lot of it is still left the sai chin part and the gilgit and baltistan part so we need to buy if you need to buy these also you have to be more courageous and take some time thank you so are you asking some questions i am waiting for it yesterday we had a good discussion there were few questions from your side Sir, what do you pay for in a content education surgery? Yes. Sir, in content content education of surgery, what do you pay for, sir? You are asking about the content educations of the surgery. Sir, sir, if there is content education, what do you prefer to do? The patient. Acha, if there is a content education to surgery, you can give the medical management first to hasten the process of uh, uh, maturation, and then you have to go for the amplification of the sound. you have to go for a hearing aid uh, usually a digital one nowadays which i advise any further questions sir even if we have to do uh, only hearing aid and not surgery then sir why do we need to hasten the process of fixation so that you at least reach a goal of uh, hearing level proper hearing level because if a person is now buying a hearing aid which cost them 10000 15000 sometimes it cost uh, around 50000 so until unless the hearing range is fixed or a hearing uh, level is fixed of the patient patient uh, if uh, he or she buys a hearing aid and his or her hearing capacity keeps on changing over the period of time that will be a, uh, give that will be giving some cost to the patient no you have to think about that also okay sir <coughs> we are expecting the another uh, we are seeing that there is recurrence of uh, the newer cases are being diagnosed of covid-19 in delhi so be precautious and take all the precautions as needed and save yourself and your family members this is my advice let's watch it over for next 15 to 20 days and if the second peak doesn't come it will be a happy uh, thing to happen and if it happens then there is a question mark any questions this was what i wanted to speak <clears throat>